This is chapter four, atoms and elements, and we're beginning with section one, elements and their symbols. We're gonna begin here with a brief introduction to the elements and what the elements are and the periodic table of elements. Um, we learned previously that elements are pure substances. They're a type of pure substance from which all other things are built. And so they cannot be broken down any further in some sense. The elements are listed on any periodic table. Okay, so you have things like hydrogen, helium, oxygen, carbon, iron. These are all different elements. So the goal of these slides is to be able to identify some common elements, write down the symbols for them, and understand where they come from. So here we see a table with some elements and their names, and you can see that the names are taken from all sorts of different sources. Some of them come from the names of planets, some of them from mythological figures, uh, from colors, geographic locations, the name of the person who discovered them, or other famous people, generally scientists for the most part. So there's all sorts of different uh, places that the names of elements come from. Many of these places are actually from foreign languages, from Greek or Latin, or sometimes even German. So some elements have symbols that are related to those foreign names rather than to what we consider the English name of them today. Every element can be represented by a chemical symbol. And every chemical symbol consists of either one or two letters. If it's one letter, it's always capital. If it's two letters, the first one is always capital and the second one is always lowercase. This might seem trivial to you at first, but even looking at this brief list of elements, you can see why it's important. So some of the one letter symbols are C for carbon, N for nitrogen, F for chlorine, and O for oxygen. Some of the two letter symbols are CO for cobalt, CA for calcium, AL for aluminum, and MG for magnesium. Now, when we form compounds later on, we'll see that you can put together two symbols for two different elements uh, next to each other to indicate the formula for the compound. So one example of such a compound is carbon monoxide, which is formed from one carbon atom, C, and one oxygen atom, O. So the chemical formula for carbon monoxide is capital C, capital O. But we can see here that the element cobalt, which is completely different, is also represented by the letter CO. So we have to recognize that capital C, capital O is different from capital C, lowercase o. Okay. So this is not an English course, this is not a penmanship course, we're not interested in making sure that everything is spelled 100% correctly and your handwriting is perfect, but you do have to make it clear what you're talking about. And if your writing or grammar or anything like that interferes with the understanding of the science, that can be an issue. So keep that in mind. Here we have a larger table with some elements and their symbols. Okay. Um, most of the symbols are derived directly from the element names as we know them. So, for instance, aluminum, the symbol is just AL. It's the first two letters of aluminum. Argon, it's AR. Right? Sometimes, if there is a conflict in that sense, they'll change the second letter to something else. So, for instance, both argon and arsenic begin with AR, but they can't both have the symbol AR. So argon got there first and it has the symbol AR and arsenic is changed to AS. Then there are other symbols which come from their Latin or Greek names. So for instance, gold here, the Latin name for gold is aurum. And so the symbol for gold is AU, which comes from aurum, just like the symbol for silver comes from argentum, the Latin word for argentum, and that's AG. Okay? Iron is another common one that you'll need to know. Iron is called ferrum in Latin, and so it has the symbol FE. Lead is plumbum, so it has the symbol PB. Okay? So most of the elements have symbols that are pretty easy to remember. They come straight from the name that you're familiar with. But some of these cases are special and you need to be on the lookout for these. You don't need to memorize the entire periodic table, but it will definitely help you if you're familiar with some of these cases. So let's complete this chart by filling in some of the elements from our periodic table. So 
we can look at a periodic table. You can consult one. Just look one up in Google. There's a, a good one. If you just Google periodic table, the first result that comes up is a very useful one. Um, but most of these we already know. We already know. So iodine, for instance, is I for iodine. Pretty simple. The chemical symbol Zn is the symbol for the element zinc. It's a metal. Magnesium has the symbol Mg. Mn, on the other hand, is an element called manganese. So you can see some of the elements have similar names. Magnesium and manganese are somewhat easy to confuse, especially because their symbols are just different by one letter. So don't confuse Mg and Mn. And then we have potassium. Potassium is one of those where the symbol doesn't come from the name potassium. It comes from the Latin name, and it is K. P, on the other hand, is a chemical symbol, but it's not the chemical symbol for potassium. It's the chemical symbol for phosphorus. Iron, remember from the last slide, is not IR. It comes from the Latin, and it's FE. On the other hand, iridium, which is another element, does have the symbol IR. So don't look at the symbol IR and think that that must be iron. Okay? Iron is FE, iridium is IR, and you're probably not going to deal with iridium very much. It's a more rare element. And then lastly, we have here N. N is a very common element. It stands for nitrogen.